uh, song that you played for us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
heads in word of prayer. How good it is for us, O oh God, to be able to gather again, assemble in this place, invite and invoke your presence into our midst. That we might give you thanks for blessing us another seven days journey. Lord, we gather to pray because these are great times. We live in a world that is so confused and confusing. In this country, we have a bipolar body of Supreme Court justices who in the same week Affirm death by determining it's okay to carry a concealed firearm in New York City. And then on the heels of that decision, renounce and revoke over 50 years established legal precedent abolishing a woman's right to choose. God, I will not believe the rightness or wrongness of that decision. That is in your hands. You alone are judge. However, I will belabor the rightness or wrongness of those who read it, especially one who looks like us, and that's all. That's where all the comparisons end. For this one, joining in a mad rabbit dash to roll the clock all the way back to Plessy versus Ferguson. 1892, separate, but equal. But I want you to touch the heart of Clarence Thomas today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and remind him to get there. The clock has to roll back past 1954, Brown versus the Board of Education. For that is a ruling that made it possible for him to attain the seat that he is in today. And before he gets there, looking at the clock, from here moving backwards where they want us to go, Clarence, you got to go past 1967, Loving versus Virginia, when the law was overturned that allowed you to marry your white wife. We need help, Lord. This country is confused. And it is confusing. Let us not then grow weary in well-doing and let us continue, God, to seek your face in prayer because this is a slippery slope and the descent is sure. From the abolishment of women's rights, we'll see the revocation of gay rights those of the LGBTQ plus community. We'll see all of that go by the wayside. And there is a plan. They have a plan. These are but smoke screens to get back to where they really want to get back to. They have a plan and that plan is to roll back the right to vote, to abolish voters' rights as it was stated in the platform of the GOP convention in Texas just one week before the revocation of Roe v. Wade. The desperate times, Lord. But we thank you, 
because we know you to be an on time God. You have kept and sustained your people through worse than this. So we ask you now, Lord, just to continue to hold us in the hollow of your hand and press us close to your breast. We ask, not because we're greedy, but because we're needy. We ask because we know that you are evil. Bless God, dear Master, those in this season of vacation as they will travel. Keep them safe in the places where they would go and safe with those with whom they would travel. And continue, we pray, to bless this house that we call St. Andrew's. And God, I did not mean to trouble you long today. But sometimes it's just time for long trouble. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us of our sins. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. sense of humor. Not only did Clarence Thomas help to open that door, but then he proudly stood there boasting about now being able to revisit all of these things. He's going to get right around to revisiting himself exactly. off of the Supreme Court. Yeah.
invite your attention now again to the book of Proverbs, the 18th chapter and the 14th verse. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? Our topic for your hearing today, Finding All Our Needs. Finding All Our Needs. Here's a true story for you. And you know I love stories. Some years ago, in my beloved North Carolina, people in a small town in the foothills got sick, and some of them died. They died of a mysterious virus of unknown origin. Around the same time, there was a similar occurrence in a small town in Wisconsin. As doctors and scientists pondered these two distant yet similar occurrences, they traced the origins of both to something in the water supplies. In North Carolina, scientists found that the cases of this sickness increased in number as they moved up from the foothills into the mountains. Still tracing the water supply, the scientists began to use divers to examine the water supply at its source a clear running stream. What they discovered was that a big old sow hall had strayed into the woods, died in the stream, and become lodged down in sunken timber. As the dead hall decayed, its bloodstream released all kinds of toxins, poisons, into the seemingly pristine stream of water. The result? People drinking from that stream were dying. All that was needed to heal the sickness. All that was needed to eradicate the diseases. All that was needed to make people whole was to find the pig and remove it. Now how does this apply to our living? Glad you asked the question. True, some of us have some missing pigs. We need to wonder this morning are we finding all our pigs? I mean, what? unseen things. What dead things? What pigs? Are contaminating the spiritual streams of our souls. How many of us lives looking like clear, pristine, Running streams have something decaying, something festering, something 
in the mountain tops of our spirits something on the inside something that has made its way downstream to our core something that is destroying us that's not plain enough allow me to try and make it plainer still I wonder how many harbored grudges hidden animosities hurt feelings and bitter memories peaks how many are poisoning our lives and stealing all our joy. You know, it only takes one. It only takes one missing peak to poison us. So, I ask a question again. Are we finding all our peaks? The text tells us the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. That is, there is in us all a higher faculty called spirit that enables our bodies to bear up against trouble, against sickness. In a general sense, what we Acknowledge here is the ability of the mind to influence the body. That's not me. That's Solomon. Proverbs 23 and 7. As a man thinking, it is hard. So is he. Another way to put this is found in the New Testament. Short version, you can have what you say. Did you know that was in there? It's in there. In the New Testament, you can have what you say. This is literally what Mark records Jesus as saying, and it's found in Mark's Gospel, Chapter 11, verses 23 and 24. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he say. Yeah. You can have what you say. Taking that word spirit in its highest sense, we see inferred that the grace of God, the supernatural infusion of God's presence, God's spirit, is that which enables us. It is that which strengthens us, making us able to endure trouble and sickness in mind, body, and spirit. And folks, I want you to know today, that's a good thing. That's a good thing because some pigs are going to go missing in our lives. Missing pigs of harbored grudges. Missing pigs of hidden animosities and hurt feelings. Pigs that have wandered off, gotten lost, and died in our spirits are poisoning our perspective, infecting our outlook, killing our promise, and those pigs need to be found. 
Those pigs need to be removed so that we can be made our own. I'm not talking about you, but not somebody you know. Some folk have been troubled a long time. Some folk have been sick a long time. Because some of their pigs have gone missing for a long time. Brings us to the rest of that verse. The rest that comes to us in the form of the question, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? We have seen that the body can fall back upon the support of the spirit when it is distressed and weakened. But what happens to the spirit when it, the spirit, is distressed and weakened? What happens when the spirit is broken? It's just grieved and weary to the point of breaking. Must the spirit eventually succumb to the pressure of brokenness? Is it as the prophet Jeremiah wondered? The eighth chapter, the 22nd verse of his prophecy. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Well, church, the good news is that there is. One more time for the heart of understanding. The good news is that there is. There is one greater than any doctor. There is one greater than any scientist. There is one who is willing and able to help us find and get rid of all our needs. But we must ask him. We must go to him. Some folk have been harboring grudges and resentments in their lives for so long, hiding hurts and wounds within themselves for so long until they've forgotten where those things are. Mm -hmm. Folks, those are lost pigs. You know, when people who know you've helped them, and when you need their help, they turn their back on you, Folks, I want you to know that's a pig that can go lost. Oh, churches for testifying. Let me testify a little bit this morning. When you sacrifice your whole career to do the right thing, and your reward is watching your whole world come crashing down. Folks, that's a pig that can go wandering off. And all you have to hold on to is beatitudes that come off sounding like little more than platitudes. You know, like what Jesus says in chapter 5, verses 11 and 12 of the Gospel of Matthew. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and speak all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be glad. 
for so did they to the prophets who before you. Yeah, that sounds good. But can it be comforting when you can't pay your bills? What's it do for you when it's vacation season, but you can't take one? Vacation? You can't even afford to stay home. Can't afford to feed your family. And then the cherry on that Sunday of disaster. You find out your pension's been stolen. That's pigs running wild. That's pigs getting lost. That's pigs dying all over the place. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? We can't bear it. I can't bear my wounded spirit. You don't need my testimony. You might need Miss Angela's testimony like I'm here today. Because Miss Angela will tell you I am definitely a Christian work in progress. I am not able, and so I know we are not able. We got some pigs that, though they be dead, I declare them rascals have a way of moving around when you try and look for them to find them and eradicate them. There is only one who can help, and his name is Jesus. We are not able, but Jesus is able. Jesus alone is able to help us. Jesus knows lost pigs can kill a spirit. But Jesus is able to do the deep dive into our spirit. Find those pigs, remove them, and cleanse us of the poisons that are killing us in our living. Only Jesus can, Jesus is the only one who can touch, go in, heal, deliver, set free, find all the pigs, and make us whole. And if we ask him, I declare Jesus will help us because it's a sad thing to live all your life and come down to the end. And what you think was a heart attack was simply the day that a dead pig got the best of you. Don't let a lost pig, a dead pig, kill you. Jesus can help us. It almost sounds like a like a bad old joke. True though. You should ride down country roads look for the messages on church signboards. And there was one that made its way into the media and into uh, the province of uh, society. It was a sign on the church board that, that read, don't let worry kill you, let the church help. <laughs> So, so I, I'm not going that way. I'm going this way. Don't let a dead pig kill you. Jesus can help. Yeah. Not help kill you. Help make you whole. Yeah. Help restore you. Yeah. All you got to do is ask him. Ask him. Jesus, I got pigs in my life that have died and poisoned the streams of my living and I don't know where they are. Have mercy upon me, O oh Lord, and help me to find my missing pigs. Mm. You imagine you don't even eat pork and a dead pig kills you anyhow. Won't you stand across the church Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, 
heal you. He is able to save you. He will carry you through. Do not yield to the temptation of believing that it is within your powers and faculties to find and root out resentments and animosities in your life. You need Jesus for that because Jesus is the only one who can do that. You know, it's like the folks who say, I'm going to give my life to Jesus just as soon as I get myself together. Well, that makes quite as much sense trying to clean your house before you invite Mary me to. Way to come to Jesus is the way we are right here and right now. Knowing our condition and knowing that we are unable to do anything about it, that swings open wide the doors of our living and invites Jesus to come in and help us
St. Andrew's, when it was Bethel Church, the first black church on the West Coast, the AME Church that predates California State. You think about that. This church has the distinction of creating the first schools for black and brown people in this area. This church has the distinction of hosting the first general conventions seeking equal rights. Prior to the Emancipation Proclamation, for people formerly enslaved and people of color in this area. This church has the distinction of having one who facilitated the last case against enslavement in the state of California case which was young, which was one, a case which caused a young girl to be free. That's the history of St. Andrews. So we're going to make sure that petition gets out and gets around. I believe it was 500 votes it was the threshold necessary to get before the Board of Education. And we understand that some have not received that uh, notification. So we'll make sure that you get it this week. Because we want to see that happen. If for no other reason than helping folk to understand for 170 odd years St. Andrews has been about the business, the work of the living God. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. And I believe that folk don't have to necessarily look like us to sign that petition. Amen. Your signature is not going to give away your uh, skin tone. So let's see if we can make that happen, all right? We'll get that done this week. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your prayers. Please continue to lift St. Andrews every day. Remember St. Andrews in your giving as the ushers would lead you out. I want to thank you for your forbearance and for your patience with me as I try and navigate you through these difficult times. Just when I thought I had an understanding because a man whose word I relied upon a man who said the pandemic phase is over. A man who said we have reached pretty much herd immunity. Then during the that man doesn't get COVID. I'm talking about Dr. Anthony Fauci. So we're still working through this, so bear with us and pray for us. I can tell you though, with joy and gladness, we are now farther along than ever before, and so it will not be as long as it has been. Amen. But I adjure you, continue to stay safe. Do the things that have kept us safe. Hope to see you again next week. Won't you stand across the church now?
have our doxology and benediction. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Grant his peace, both now and forever.